Uh, so let's move on to our next topic. So we brought up Breath of the Wild quite a bit last time. We didn't really talk about any specifics because I wanted to save it for this topic. Yep. Um, Breath of the Wild previews are out there, and I believe by the time you hear this, the reviews will not be out yet. So this will still be relevant preview-wise because I think the reviews come out on the 2nd. And this will be releasing... Uh, let me see. We're recording on the 26th. It'll be released. This will be released Tuesday on the 20th. Yeah. Be yep. the 20th. Yep. The 20th. So, so yep. we're good. Um, unless you're obviously listening on Monday. Then, then you're all good. A full audio version. Uh, Breath of the Wild previews have come out. We've learned a ton of stuff. And I'm going to warn right now for anyone who does not want to know anything else about Breath of the Wild moving forward. Stop listening again. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. We will not be talking about story details because they were not allowed to talk about story details. But so we, will, we don't know any. <laughs> we will talk about some other stuff. Maybe they weren't allowed to show, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is something I saw. It's in a deleted video. Some idiot put up a live stream of something he was not supposed to put up a live stream of. Whoops. Um, he got the Hero of Time trousers in a chest from an amiibo. No, boy. So who's the Hero of Time? Do you even know? Yeah, no. Hero of Time. I know, right? Nintendo, Nintendo Podcast. He doesn't know the Hero of Time. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Hero of Time. That is Link from Ocarina of Time. Yeah, I kind of figured that, but. Um, he is known as the Hero of Time. And the Hero of Time trousers are what he wore as adult Link in there. Yeah. Which means you know, we also found out that there is a standard cap to Link's cap. Yeah. We didn't see him get it from a chest. We assume he got it earlier. And he put that on. Uh, and we assume that there's Hero of Time trousers, Hero of Time cap. Probably Hero Time Tunic. Yeah, probably. Um, and he got all these through Amiibo. I don't know if he got them through the standard Amiibo, if he got them through the Breath of the Wild Amiibo. You can use them all once a day. Um, but reality is that the Tunic that everyone everyone wants in the game, the standard stuff, it exists. Yep. It might only be attainable through an Amiibo. I don't know. We don't know. You might be able to find it in the game. None, none of the people who have had the game at the time of the previews I played it enough to really tell you if you can get it in the game anywhere. Because it's only been oh, they well, right. about five hours. Yeah. But um, it's in the game. Now, for you, that really doesn't matter. You're not someone who's been an avid Zelda fan and like deeply tied to, Link has to wear green. He has, well, to, the, yeah. he has, to, yeah. the, has to be left-handed. He has to, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> people are so mad that Link's right-handed in the game because he's been traditionally left-handed. It's like, these kind of things don't matter to you because you haven't been embattled, I guess, yeah, in, I know, in that's the true. franchise like that. Um, I mean, I've always been a fan, but yeah. that's mainly because of you. Because of me, yeah. yeah. This will be the first game that... Le- this, folks, might be the game that makes him want to play older Zelda games. Because, maybe. Or yeah. this game is just so much better than the rest <laughs> of them. That, they can't who cares? It. Um, so, I just wanted to bring up that that's in the game. I think it's I think it's cool for people who want it. I personally just don't care. Yeah. I love his... Like, the Amiibo that they show. Like, we got some Amiibo up here. We don't have the Breath of the Wild Amiibo yet. And... Like the him wearing the blue tunic, it's my favorite color. Oh it's yeah, also yeah, the official yeah. color of the Nintendo Prime. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm not wearing blue today, but you guys have seen me. I wear blue a lot. The Zelda hat I wear has blue on it. Like I love blue, and so that his blue tunic's amazing. And uh, in this game, the thing is, you can change colors of things. There, there's ability to dye clothes. That's been confirmed. We have no, video okay, now. nice. Um, I'm just gonna dye everything blue anyways. <laughs> Green tunic? Ah, screw it. It's blue. No, it's just blue. It's blue. It's like, if I could change a Hero of Time's clothes from green to blue, that's what I'm going to do. No, right. So, like, it's yeah. not going to be traditional anyway. It's going to look like the Zora outfit from Ocarina of Time. I don't care. Blue. Blue it is. Dab a up and die? So, I know I, maybe people get mad at me because, oh, you're a big Zelda fan, but you don't care about the... T- I'm like, no, I really don't. I never really thought I'm playing a game because he's wearing a green tunic. That's yeah, just right. never been why I play Zelda, I guess. It's like, I don't play the game because he's left-handed. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> uh, like, look, he's left-handed on this amiibo. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. And if you want to argue, I think that's Twilight Princess Link in the Wii version, he's right-handed. So, yeah. It doesn't matter to me. Um, it probably matters to you guys, I know. people. I, I, I have been deep within the Zelda fan base for like 19 years. I get it. I know people are passionate about this stuff. I've never been. I don't think. I think it's all irrelevant. Um, that being said. <laughs> and there goes about half her fans. Yeah, there goes like, everyone just stopped watching right there. Um, stop listening. Uh Let's get into some more stuff uh, about this game, and I'm going to bring up something that you didn't, you don't know yet. Um, oh boy! The first review has come out, or okay. has I guess it's come out. It's only come out for people who subscribe to Edge Magazine. Um, it Edge Magazine will be publicly available until the second, but if you subscribe, you already can access it. Um, there's a couple things that are interesting about this review, and I'm not going to get any of the spoiler stuff with it. Just one, it's a perfect ten. Yeah, and. Well. 
wow. Horizon is a nine. Wow. Um, so yeah. Horizon, the one that's been getting all the perfect tens recently and comes out a few days before Breath of the Wild, it releases actually, I think, the same day that this segment will on our video version on the yeah. channel. Yeah. Um, so Horizon comes out that day, and then Zelda comes out a few days later, and they think Horizon is, uh, or Zelda is that much better than Horizon. Well, um, you're talking one point, but still. One point in video well, game reviews yeah. is huge. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It, it's like yeah. a big... I, I don't know, do reviews matter? Do review scores matter? But yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a big deal for review score points. And then on top of that, here's the thing that's going to matter for Nintendo fans because you know, if you don't if you don't care about Horizon, you don't care about that that comparison. You do, you might care that they got a perfect ten. That's always good. But they claim that essentially Breath of the Wild is the best Zelda game ever made, and it unseats the game that they felt was always the best in the series, Ocarina of Time. Which Ocarina of yep. Time, for those who don't know. I don't know what rock you live under watching a Nintendo podcast that you don't know this outside of him. <laughs> hey. um, is that Ocarina of Time is the number one rated game of all time. Huh. Okay, yeah, I didn't know I didn't it know that. It is the highest average review score of all time. No game's beaten it. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Across all of gaming. Now, as I said, a lot of it, I, I've said this in the past, a lot of this has to do with when it came out. Um, if our Ocarina of Time were released later when online was more popular and more online reviews were counted, it probably wouldn't have had as high. It probably would have knocked down a few percentage points. But either way, it's the highest review game of all time. They think it's better than that. Is this a big deal? Uh, obviously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, if it's going to beat the highest rated game of all time. Yeah. Yeah, obviously it's a big deal. Um, and I, I've seen the commercials for Horizon, and that game looks phenomenal. So here's the only negative they have. In this whole review, because the review is, I mean, it's perfect. It's a perfect score. So, of course, right, the review yeah. isn't really, doesn't really have a lot of negatives, but it's not like they didn't try to find some negatives. And here's the only things they can come up with. They play, by the way, they did play the Switch and Wii U versions. This is the first time we got to hear anything about the Wii U final version. Um, one, the Switch version has slight frame rate drops um, during sequences that aren't necessarily gameplay heavy. Um, as an example, uh, we, and we've, we saw this in a comparison video from, from Game Explain. Uh, in docked mode, when Link is running through the grass in the Great Plateau, sometimes the system hiccups a little. But then in undocked mode, it doesn't. It's really weird. That is weird. It's really weird. Uh, but uh, So they know, they did note that that does happen sometimes. They didn't say it really happens during combat, but it's just something that they noted. It's something you, you will notice time to time. It doesn't actually negatively impact your gameplay. But, you know, for people who really, really care about a super smooth experience all the time, it can throw you out of the game a little bit. Um, yeah. Unless you're playing in dock mode, then apparently you're perfectly fine. They didn't you notice mean, any frame rate drops mode? in dock oh, I'm sorry, in undock mode. In portable mode. <laughs> yeah. So when they're playing in handheld mode, they didn't notice it. So if that's the only way you plan to play anyways, you don't got to worry Again, about it. Again, that's a little but weird. But here's what sucks. For you Wii U owners out here, this is the only negative they had on the Wii U review. Frame rates many, many times throughout the game drop down into the teens. Oof, ouch. The Switch frame rate drops, we're talking like going from 30 to 28, 25 at worst, not teens. Yeah, that is ouch. Wii U version drops to the teens. So all the frame rate concerns people had back at E3, they're legit. They're real. Frame rates drop really, really low at times during this game on Wii U. Yeah. So if you ever were thinking out there, man, why get the Switch version? It no, does have better frame rates. There you rates. go. There's we your, have a review that played both games thoroughly. And there is a frame rate difference. So, um, that is the only negatives they have, though. That's the crazy thing. As much as like you might care about the, that or care that it's not 1080p for some reason, that's it. The game itself is like perfect. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. The actual game is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And it, to, to them. That's, yeah. Uh, I mean, even even playing the Wii U version when we were out at E3, I... To, to hear, yeah. like, how do you make a game perfect? Like, because that means there's nothing you can do better. In their mind, yeah, I mean, th- that's kind of nuts. But like, like, the, like, even when you give a ten, like you might saw some criticism of something. Like, nope. Yeah. Nope. Nothing. Just frame rate issues. Okay. Yeah, that is absolutely. <laughs> that's insane. Nuts. That's insane. Um, and to to throw even more praise on how, how Breath of the Wild is looking, uh, one previewer who reviewed Her- Horizon Zero Dawn again, bringing that up again, is he went on to say. That after playing Horizon Zero Dawn, which he rated like a 9.5 or something, uh, with a very, very high score, or maybe he gave it a 10, I can't remember. He said he wishes he were to play Breath of the Wild before Horizon Zero Dawn. 
Uh, not because it makes Breath of the Wild look bad, but because Breath of the Wild makes Horizon Zero Dawn look like a little kid's game in comparison. <laughs> wow. He didn't say exactly little kid, but he, but he basically said that Horizon feels like a beginner game compared to Breath of the Wild. Wow. Uh, because of how Breath of the Wild approaches everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing about Breath of the Wild that we have to keep in mind going into the future. Because there's been a lot of people that want to try to tear down the game. Because uh, people who aren't big Zelda fans and aren't big Nintendo fans uh, see Nintendo fan and Zelda fans' reaction to Breath of the Wild as if they've been living in a bubble, right? Like, like Breath of the Wild's only uh, revolutionary if all you play is Nintendo games. Because because you don't have that experience with The Witcher. You don't have that experience with Skyrim. You don't have that experience with, uh, you know, say, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Like, all these other open-world games that Nintendo's never had. Nintendo fans don't have the experience with that. They claim, you know, they can't actually yeah, yeah. speak yeah. for them. But they claim they don't have that experience. So Zelda only feels revolutionary because of that. And here we have all these previewers who are reviewing the game coming out, and they're not like this one. The only one. a bunch of them said like, "Dude, like, no, this is, Zelda is changing the game." Yeah. Like, yeah. Like people think, oh, all, all these naysayers, you know, they want to tear it down. It's just like you haven't played it, you don't know. Like, we're, oh, Breath of the Wild looks empty. Have you played it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It might, yeah. It might not look like it's chock full of stuff when you're watching it on a stream, maybe even, but. When you're playing it, you don't understand how teeming with life it is, how much stuff is going oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're seeing tiny segments. You're not seeing oh, the full picture. There's butterflies flying around everywhere. There's yeah, grass Which, moving. There's and, like, those animals. Like, oh, yeah. it's got wildlife. Oh, that wildlife is just for, like, backwards. No, you can no. kill it, hunt yeah. it, hunt it down, cook it. You can shoot the birds down from the sky. <laughs> you can mount I've, deer I've, and I've, ride <laughs> deer. Yes, I did not know that. That is and fantastic. And then immediately kill them afterwards for me. That is fantastic. Me. Yes, I'm so gonna do that. You can't no. keep deer at stable, so like literally, you just ride it, and once you're done, you're still who cares? Like, you can mount it, you can ride it, you can soothe it, you can try to train it, but can, it is what it can is. Can you do it with hogs? And then you Please tell me you can do it with hogs too. Uh, That'd be fantastic. Ride, too. I can't ride a hog. Why not hog? Oh, a hog? Yeah. Don't know yet. I don't know. Be, I don't know if anyone got sweet. to the point that you can do that yet. I, I'm assuming if you can mount anything that's that you would think you could just hop on, you probably can in this game. Um, horses are just the only ones you could stable, and the only ones you keep long haul. Um, and horses so far are the fastest that we're aware of. Mm-mm, the evolved. Because yeah, the deer obviously. aren't as fast. Which, duh. There's a reason that horses are the ones that we domesticated to ride and not not deer. <laughs> Plus deer don't have the hooves and it's just, yeah, it is they, they're not as big. But, well, the deer he rode was pretty big. <laughs> he was riding true. like a pretty 20 point buck. It was sweet. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, there, there's a lot going on in this game where you can make an argument that nothing this game has done is new on its own. It's right. the combination of elements that make it invigorating, and not only that, make it revolutionary, as people say. Well, right, and, and like I pointed out in an earlier podcast, that they had so many even just different teams working on this game that I I don't know if anybody else has actually done that before, where they've had like a sole-focused team on just the landscape, just the oh, yeah. animals, just yeah, this, do. just they that. Do. They do. They do. Zelda's not the okay. only one to do that. It, it's just, it's just, it's hard to explain because we we don't have the full version right now. So like we're just talking based on the previews and our own experience back at E3. And when you haven't played the game, it's easy, I guess, if you're not someone who's a big Zelda fan or a big Nintendo fan, to be annoyed by all these Zelda people that are now hogging, you know, all the hype as Horizon's coming, all this stuff, and being like, look, we're not trying to talk on Horizon, but at the same time, like Horizon isn't. No one's calling Horizon revolutionary. That's kind of the big takeaway here. Horizon's not being called revolutionary. Zelda is. They're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. It's because Zelda is just doing... Like, here, Here's just one example that the reviewer gave that makes Zelda just at another level. In Horizon, apparently the bow and arrow, that's your primary weapon in Horizon, it feels basically like a glorified sniper rifle. You pull back, you through, and you shoot straight pretty much at anything for whatever distance. Yeah. In Breath of the Wild... You have to arc your shot if you want more distance. Yeah. <laughs> which is just like a real... Yeah, well, definitely. Like, yeah. yeah, you have a certain distance. You can shoot it straight. But if you want to go beyond that, you need to arc your shot. Oh, yeah. I was sniping things at E3. That was yeah. fun. And that's the thing. It's like, that's the thing. It is... They both have bow and arrow mechanics. Both are very critical to the game. But Breath of the Wilds takes it to that extra step yep. that they didn't do in Horizon. And this is something else I noticed in some of the Horizon footage. And again, I know it feels like I'm bashing Horizon. Horizon looks fantastic. Oh, it I does. Wanna, like I, I said, it, it considering yeah. buy a PlayStation 4 to play, it looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. Um, 
this is just another thing to consider about Breath of the Wild taking it to the next level. When you're walking through foliage in Horizon, it doesn't look like it moves. Like, it's not reacting to your body yeah. touching it. Okay. Everything you touch in Breath of the Wild oh, reacts yeah. to you. The grass, every blade of grass, every bush, every tree, anything you touch moves based on how you touched it. Mm-hmm. It's all reactive to the whole overall physics engine. Oh, yeah. And that's not something that's actually that common. I know people think it is. It's not. No. It's not. I can tell you in Grand Theft Auto Five, I played it. I've ran through grass. It wasn't always reacting to my physics of yeah. my guy. Yeah. It, it just wasn't. No, that's not a knock on Grand Theft Auto Five because it's not a game that takes place out in the woods for the most part. You can't go to the woods, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but like that's not the like it's not based on being out in the wild. So it's like I, I don't expect it to. But it's like that's the thing. This game does things you don't expect because other games haven't taken it to that level. The level of polish and the level of interactivity and that physics engine is a big reason for it. It is at a whole new level. The games haven't done. That's why it feels revolutionary. It feels like now that they've done this, whatever next game comes up for the Witcher series, which they say is done, but maybe they maybe we're gonna do like a Mass Effect and have like another series that takes place in the same world. It's just a totally different story. Yeah. Whatever comes next in some of these other open world games, whatever the next Skyrim is, Breath of the Wild is setting the bar. Uh huh. People didn't think it could, but it is. Yeah. For world building, for interactivity, for flow, for how everything works together, for that physics engine. Now that's a standard that future games are going to be held to. And I think that's why it's saying, this is why Breath of the Wild feels revolutionary. You may not think it's the most visually pleasing game out there because you don't like the art direction. That's fine. I do. Plenty of these ga- plenty of these videos make it look fantastic. You didn't see one of the previews. This guy went to the coast and just watched the sunset. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Gorgeous. And the thing is, that's with dynamic weather. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, that's the thing. Everything in this game, it feels like you're out in the real world. Doesn't this is the way stuff will work? You step on grass, it moves. Yeah. It gets crushed. Yeah. You know, it, it, everything is so interactable um, and so well thought out and so well built. Uh, and everything in this game isn't explained per se. Like there was one footage I saw. This guy kind of went to like what looked like a, bunch, a graveyard with headstones, and at night one of the headstones, the eyes lit up, and you didn't know what it meant. What do I do? How do I interact with this thing? Do I hit it with a hammer? Do I talk to it? <laughs> Smash do with hammer. I try to blow it up with a bomb? Like, well, how do I interact with it? it yeah. Can I interact with it? What does this mean? Yeah. There's no explanation. You got to figure it out. Yeah. And this person did, and it, we didn't get to see beyond it because I think it went into story stuff. Um, when he did, when he finally did figure out to activate it. By the way, surprise. It, maybe it's not as big a surprise. Arrow shoot it in the eye. No. But it's a great <laughs> stone thing. So I mean, it has eyes, but it's a stone. It, anyways. Yeah. Um, it's video games. So, just, I'm obviously going to be biased because I love Zelda games. I'm going to be biased because I love Nintendo. But at the same point, I own The Witcher 3. I own Dragon Age Inquisition. Actually, I own the original Dragon Age and Dragon Age 2. Um, I own Skyrim. I do not own the remastered edition of it, but I do own the original Skyrim. And you can mod it up to look pretty good. Um, a very good, yeah, actually. yeah. Um, and and really kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, I I don't own Grand Theft Auto Five, but I played it. I own Grand Theft Auto Four uh, and San Andreas. Like I, I have played a ton of open world games. Haven't always beat them all the way, but I have played them. And I've also played Breath of the Wild, just the opening area. Yep, and it's different. It, it it's is just not it, until you like watching on the stream. I don't even know if it does it justice like when you guys are watching some of you guys are tuning in when we're live streaming say you couldn't get a switch at launch or you couldn't get the game at launch and you're watching it's just different and it's a feel you get while you play it's just like you're having fun sniping stuff yeah you guys might think it's you might as might enjoy watching it you don't understand the feel of doing it of arcing that perfect shot yeah to hit to get that headshot on an enemy that's freaking 100 yards away just like the thrill when you go hunting and you are going to shoot a deer, and the deer happens to be out of your normal range with a bow. And you yep. happen to arc a shot in the middle of the woods over a tree branch and nail it perfect to knock it down. Yep. You can do that in Breath of the Wild. Yep. And the thrill you get in real life is going to be similar to the thrill you get here. Yeah, It's not as much physical exertion, of course, but it's still skill Yeah. to do it. Yeah. High skill. Oh, yeah. And the many ways there are to die in this game, the, the lack of hand-holding. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, one of the one of the um, videos that I did watch actually said like they couldn't find a, d- a death counter, and actually, this game encouraged you in a way to die. To experiment like, with things. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 one of those things. Can I cross the server? I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Doesn't if I die, you. well, I'll tell you. I like, died. There's a stasis ability. 
uh, which is that one where you hit the thing and it stores energy and then it lets it out and, and, and the yeah. thing will fly out. Yeah. You can smash something and then grab onto it and go flying with it. Yep. I know. They, they smoked it. Awesome. They smoked, they smoked the thing. They tried to <laughs> yeah. also land on top of it. They mistimed their thing and didn't land on top like I think they wanted to. Yeah. They wanted to smoke them and then land up there and then take out the rest. But it, Right, right. Um, And like the approach to things that like some people say, oh, there's too many exploding barrels in the game. Like, what's the explanation? Like, like this is, like, seems like a convenient gameplay gimmick. And it's like, well, have you considered this? The exploding barrels are there because the enemies put them there because they're gathering it up for use themselves. Right, yeah. They're gonna... Because, you know what this game does? Those enemies can grab those barrels and throw them at you. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. As you're climbing a cliff, they will continue to shoot arrows at you and try to hit you with their sticks and clubs. They'll throw, like, they are trying to get you. Yeah. The same methods you use to kill them, they can use against you. You push a rock down a cliff... They can push a rat on the cliff and hit you. <laughs> that they can. They can throw like like they lose their club. They will pick rocks up off the ground, and chuck them at you. Like this game, it, I, I just there's been nothing like this. Like some people said, oh, you know, like one person on NeoGaf said, like oh, this is like the best AI I've ever seen. It's like oh, really? What about it's so great? And like oh, well you like all oh, the enemy avoiding the bomb. Like oh, enemies have been doing that since this game. Or enemies have been doing. Yes, and in other games, this stuff has existed. It has not existed to this level collectively in a single game. Yeah, That's what makes Breath of the Wild special. Other games have experimented with these methods. Breath of the Wild doesn't feel like an experimentation. Yeah, no. It feels like a realization of what dynamic AI should be, what a dynamic world should be, what a connected, convoluted, unexplained world should be like. Yeah. And that's before we even get into the story. We have no idea story. We have no idea about the a lot of. We have seen some character interactions. Now we don't know what it means in the, in the grand scheme of things. We've heard that side quests are amazing, but we can't. They can't talk about anything right. with them. They can just say they're amazing. They exist. <laughs> um, yeah. Cuckoos are in the game, and yes, if you whack them enough times, they summon an army that comes yes. and kill you. And yes, they will also attack your horse. Like you got to be careful. <sighs> now you can also glide with them, although you don't need to in this game because you have a paraglider. Uh, but I don't think gliding with them takes up stamina, so that is something ah. to take into consideration if you want to glide with one. Because I, I, the one time I saw someone glide with it, I did not see the stamina, stamina meter go down. Don't take that as that's how it always is, but if that's true, that is something to consider for potentially longer gaps of stuff. Granted, I don't know how... I don't know if you can find cuckoos out in the wild. I think it was in a town they saw. No. Which, huh. they were supposed to show off a town, so the fact that we saw a little bit of a town was kind of yeah, breaking, well. breaking a little NDA. Um, there's just so much with this game. Uh, apparently yeah. in one video, I didn't see this myself, but someone told me it happened. Um, there was a water dragon that just came out of a lake. Wait, what? Yeah. Didn't even know. The guy was just like out there fighting all of a sudden, dude, with this giant water dragon just bursting out of the water. And you're like, uh, shat. <laughs> what <laughs> is happening? Yeah. Right. Um, the amount, it's just, it, it's crazy. In this game, uh, all the stuff we've seen. So, by the time the game comes out, we'll have reviews. We'll know even more. Uh, at least I will, because I as I, I have Zelda Informer, I, and plus I I love spoilers. I'm one of those people. I don't mind spoiling things. If I end up knowing the whole story before I play, I don't care. It doesn't change the fact that I really wanted to play this game. It just makes me want to play it even more. If I know how it ends, I don't care. Yeah, I it, want to. Uh, you're probably different. It it depends on the thing. I think for this game, it won't matter. But, like, books and movies, I kind of do like the... Especially movies. Movies, I don't like being spoiled. Books, I don't mind if I know the ending first. Only because... When I read books, for me, it's always about the journey rather than the destination. That is true, yeah. Um, I'll give you that one. And that's the way I am with games. That's why I usually don't care about knowing... Like, obviously, if I get a game like Madden, there's lots of things spoilers. You just no, want right, to know. Yeah. But, like, in a story-driven game, I don't care if I know the whole story. Because as much as you tell me, it doesn't tell me how I'm going to experience that story while I play. Mm -hmm. um, you're just telling me what the cutscenes say, what this says, what that says. Yeah. It, it, my journey through that story is not chronicled yet. doesn't exist yet. Right. So, and that's the thing, like, and that's the way I've always been. I know there's people that are like, oh, I don't want to know anything about the story. And that's why we're not talking about the story uh, in, yeah. in terms of, like, anything we might know. Because I, I did hear something, but I'm not going to bring it up because I understand. I respect yeah. that people want to not know that kind of stuff. But it's like, it doesn't bother me. For for me, it's it's mostly movies and TV shows. Yeah, TV that, shows. I'll give that. I I, I want to know what's next, but I almost want to see it. Like like example, I wasn't gonna watch Flash this season, um, but I started watching it, 
because of stuff I heard happened. So, like, there are times I want to know because yeah. sometimes maybe I'm falling out of love with the series and then I find out something that right. makes me want to get back in. But movies, I'll agree. I, I usually don't want to know how know at least how it ends. You obviously want to know some of the story. That's what you mean. Right, 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 right. But yeah. you usually don't want to know how it ends. A lot of times, I just know. Like that's that's one thing with movies that's a little weird. Is you should halfway sometimes through, halfway you can through, predict you it. know what the end yeah. is going to be. Yeah, you know they're going to get together. You well, know? right. And it's yeah. really shocking. Like if they someone died, you're like, well, I saw the death coming. Or it's like, oh well. Yeah. There's very few movies that end in a way that shock me and surprise me. Right. I guess like like uh, you know I guess spoilers for Star Wars Rogue One. It didn't really surprise me. It well, ended with her finding Luke. No, oh, you mean uh, not Rogue One. You mean, uh... Well, not Rogue One, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now we forget the God name God dang it. it. Wow. It's even better than Rogue One. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, God, why the hell? Episode 7. Episode 7. Episode 7. <laughs> um, not, 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 we're like Love Star Wars. We totally can't believe we forgot the name of Episode 7. Remember Rogue One? Because that was the most recent one we watched. Uh, do not remember Episode 7. Um, but it ended with Rey finding Luke. I saw it coming. It was going to happen. Why Plus, it doesn't help that I also saw a preview where... Clearly, you saw Luke Skywalker, so it was like you knew he was going to show up at some point. But it's like I knew it was coming, right? I just knew it was coming. So uh, I don't really mind. I, I guess I've always been someone I love spoilers. So like I, I don't mind spoilers for Breath of the Wild. I don't mind it for movies. I don't mind it for I. I don't want someone telling me the entirety. I guess of a movie. Yeah. I, also, another one for me is is if that there's like, such a gigantic twist that comes out of left field. Well, like, field. put it this way. Here's here's that, the, here's one of the big spoilers you could argue from. It, sorry if you haven't seen episode 7 by now. I, I'm not even going to spoil the warning this, even though I just did. Um, <laughs> how Solo dies. That's a big spoiler. Yeah, and The Force Awakens. There we go. The Force Awakens, yeah. So Han Solo dies, right? In The Force Awakens. And that's like a, supposed to be a big shocking thing. While you're watching, you see it coming. Because the scene's playing out exactly like A New Hope. Like, to, yeah. to a yeah. T. Like, he's going to die. You just know he's going to die. Um, granted, it's a little bit different context, and it's playing out more like when Luke got his hand cut off, and obviously Luke didn't die. But you just knew. Han Solo is dying right here. It's happening. Yeah. His son's yeah. About, his, yes, his son is about to kill him. Um, that, 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 yeah, that's not but a you spoiler. Could see either, it com- but you could see it coming, but if you didn't watch the show, you, the movie, you wouldn't see it coming. So if someone told me that going in, oh, by the way, Han Solo dies. Okay, that's a pretty big spoiler. I didn't want to know until I saw the events that led up to it. Right. Um, that kind of thing, I don't necessarily want to know. Like, uh, oh, I saw the pregnant. I don't know if I want to know until I know the events that lead up to it. Right. But it, it's one of those that, if even if I knew, I still want to know how it happened. Yeah, yeah. If if they tell you what, ha- like, like the like Zelda's pregnant, if they don't tell you what the what ha- of yeah, that is. Yeah. Okay, like, fine. Okay. What's yeah, yeah. Past yeah. Cells, previous cells, Yeah, like, right. Like, exactly. What, what yeah, yeah. Um, are, are you your own grandpa? You never know. Yeah, like it, it's yeah, it's it's just. Oh, that'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so weird. Um. Anyway, so I don't know. I I don't mind spoilers. I love Breath of the Wild. I can't wait to play this game. The fact that the previews are all really glowing of it. The fact that the only review out in the wild at the time of recording is perfect. I don't know what more I could ask. Uh, again. Like, I, I, I just want, outside of not liking art style, which is a personal choice, right. I want to know what people that love open world action games can actually find to hate about this game. I actually want them to pick up, play this game, and tell me what they don't like. Yeah, definitely. Like, even the breakable item system, which is something some Zelda fans are worried about, everyone has said when you play, it makes sense. It is actually a driving force in the game, and it's beautiful. Yep. As I said it was at E3. It felt that way at E3. Yeah. yeah but now definitely. that we know what it's like off the plateau. Yeah. 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 Breakable items are a big deal. And this is the one spoiler I'll give you because it's not story re- related. I heard the Master Sword can break too. Oh, boy. So there is potentially literally no unbreakable items. So if you were hoping for all oh, Master Sword. Nope. Now, it might, no. it might be the yeah. hardest to break. But that also means... You know what happens? Is there a story significance to it breaking? Like, or, if it breaks, do you accidentally free climb it again? Does yeah. it make you not really want to use the master sword because you're afraid of breaking it? Yeah, yeah. So, or, or is there a way to actually repair it? And this or assumes something? that you can use the you know that you can use it extensively. That you don't get it till the end of the game, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let's just close with this uh, for Breath of the Wild. Is 
Is there anything like anything you want? Like, what's the first thing you hope to, to hope to find when you get off the Great Plateau? Like, what's the first thing you hope to find? I don't, you don't know what direction you're going. You don't know anything. But like, I, I is honestly, there like you've seen you've seen a couple of previews. Is there anything you hope? Like, is it a horse? Is it a stable? Is it a I, I, horses would be kind of cool. I, I again haven't played with the horses. I've seen the horses. They look. And apparently the horses awesome. in this are better than any of other Again, I know it's better than any other game out there. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, and it's like, play the game, compare it to other horses in other games. It's not even close, apparently. And uh, these words are coming from people who play all these other games and yeah. do it for a job. Yeah. And they're saying, it's nothing like this. Nothing this good. As, yeah. And that's just a horse. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason that you know, it was like emphasizing the sound of the hooves, because that's the attention to detail. It's yeah. Like, Everything is thought out for a reason. It towns. I think a town would be kind of cool to see, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, one thing I, I wanted to bring up, because you don't know this yet, is when you complete a shrine, you get, like, this orb. I forget what it's called. A spirit orb or something. Um, at the end of four shrines, you can turn in these orbs. Don't know where. I'm assuming it's in a town somewhere. Um, and you can either increase your health or increase your stamina. Okay. Okay. So that's how you get, get increase your health or stamina in this game. And then... Uh, apparently, later on in the game, you can kind of respec. So even if, like, you went heavy and you have 20 hearts but no stamina, later on you're like, okay, I need a hell of a lot more stamina. You can go, I don't know if you pay rupees, I don't know what you yeah. do, but you can turn it around and change your spec up. Oh, okay. Um, so that's, well, yeah, would, uh, that's be, really cool. Be... Like, uh, like, again, more RPG-like stuff, but it's, uh, it's kind of cool. It's different. Yeah. yeah. So that means potentially no heart increases when you beat a boss at the end of a dungeon. Again, breaking Zelda tradition. You never know. I'm well, breaking yeah, the tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe it's another orb. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe you get four orbs. And you choose yeah, one. There you I go. have no idea. Um, just thought I'd throw that out there because I've been wondering myself, like, how do you increase health? There it is. Now we know. Uh, did we talk about the Korok seeds? No, we did not. Yeah, so another thing is the Korok seeds. So randomly throughout the game, there's like all these Koroks hidden, and the game does not tell you they're hidden. So, like, you literally just find them either by accident or because you think this looks like a rock pushes in this hole. Or, like, there's, and like in one graveyard, like, there's this gravestone with, like, these two plates. And they're like, oh, what do you do? And like, it doesn't tell you what to do. But if you put some an offering on them, like an apple or something, mm-hmm. on each one, Korok appears. Like, like, it's really cool how they do it. But they give you seeds when you find them. These seeds you give to this other giant Korok. Um, they've only shown one. Maybe there's multiple in the game who has maracas. And in exchange for giving him seeds to help his maracas make cool, cool noise. And by the way, the song he does with his maracas, is it's short and sweet, but it's it, amazing. Yeah, I think we kind of forgot to spoil her this um, one, too. It's okay. This is a story, though. Like, uh, this whole well, yes, but still. Spoil, this yeah. whole section was spoiled, so I'm not worried about it. I spoiled it at the very beginning. said, if you do not want Breath of the Wild, spoiler, that is don't listen. So, um, they... You give him one seed, and he you have an option to increase different parts of your inventory. So you can increase how many item, how many weapons you can hold. You can increase how many arrow types you can hold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So like, and I don't know if you can reset that ever. That one we don't know, but we mm-hmm. do know that you just give him seeds, and you can. So like, there's a reason, further reason to explore the world to find even the Koroks. Yeah. Like everything in this game is about exploration. I love it. 